there was a bit of a Twitter war a couple of weeks ago about CICD and Vercel and how to deploy web apps and how to build web apps. And I'm not going to get into the nastier parts of it because boy, did it get nasty. But I am going to talk a little bit about my kind of rapid descent into simplicity. So I started on Vercel as a lot of people do. I honestly started on AWS as a lot of people do. So let's, let's start there. So I deployed Grabber app on Vercel, on AWS, not Vercel, which is technically AWS. It, it all gets very confusing. I started on AWS. I deployed on the normal AWS kind of VPS instance. I honestly, EC2, that's what I was going for. Um, I deployed the main web application on EC2 and I used a ton of lambdas for a product that has three users. <laughs> Not gonna get into my heartbreak there. I made it incredibly complicated with this incredible microservice architecture that was definitely going to scale to the moon for all three people who don't even really use the product that much. It's honestly dead right now. And honestly, I built an incredibly expensive pile of code that I don't want to maintain anymore. I've already talked about how I'm rebuilding Grabber app. That's kind of taken a backseat to a lot of other projects that I'm working on, but I started on AWS, then I said, okay, for this rebuild, we're going to move over to Vercel. Let's learn Vercel, let's, let's jump into all of the different things that Vercel has to offer. And Vercel has a lot to offer. Vercel is a great platform if you are specifically focusing on deploying Next.js web applications. It's almost like the people who own Vercel are also the main maintainers of Next.js. We could get into all of the perverse incentives there, but there have already been a lot of people who have talked about that at length, and I just don't really feel like getting into it. It's like midnight right now when I'm recording this, and I don't want to get into all of that drama. What Vercel does allow you to do is it allows you to hook into a GitHub repository and deploy a Next.js web application very seamlessly. It has edge functions, it has lambdas, it has all of the really cool things that you would want in a web services architecture. It is also a pain in the ass if you need to do anything outside of the very, very norm within Next.js web applications. The UI can be a little bit clunky and irritating to deal with, and frankly, I found myself just wanting normal, simple stuff. So I said, okay, what is the next best option? Let's move down the complexity chain. This was right around the time when people started posting more of their horror stories of their Vercel bills blowing up. If you're not familiar, Vercel has basically a pay for usage kind of approach to hosting your web application. So the more people use it, especially if you have not designed your backend well, which tons of people have designed their backends badly, if you don't design it well, your bill is going to blow up. We are talking overnight tens of thousands of dollars. That's not great. We're also talking about people who built their stuff pretty well and then they got DDoSed and that cost them hundreds or thousands of dollars. So while I was kind of focusing on trying to get off of Vercel, all of this stuff started blowing up. So I said, okay, let's abandon Vercel. Let's look at the next best option, Coolify. Now, I'm going to preface this with saying I have no problem with Coolify. Coolify honestly is a really great alternative if you're focusing on Next.js web applications that you want to deploy quickly. I really enjoyed the Coolify experience. They have got tons of stuff, it's free. And the support, it's open source also, if you're you know into that, that's really cool. Um, it's got all of the different things that Vercel has. The UI is a little less clunky and they give you a lot more control over your infrastructure because you're deploying it yourself. That's awesome. It was also incredibly easy to set up. So huge props to them. Now, here's where things kind of got into the skill issue domain. And I will be the first to admit that a lot of the issues that I had with Coolify and with Vercel and with AWS are a matter of skill issue. If you really, really want to get good at these infrastructures, you can do that. You can focus really, really hard on getting just cracked at deploying things with Vercel very, very cheaply and never spend a dime. You can stay in the free tier and actually have users. There are tons of people who do this. You can get really, really good and get all of the certifications through AWS and never need any incredibly expensive support and you'll have no problem. But I didn't really want to do that. I didn't want to become a framework junkie. I didn't want to become locked into you know, a specific you know, infrastructure approach. And 
Coolify had a couple of problems with it, specifically with deploying Rust applications that I didn't love. It wasn't great at deploying Rust stuff. I also started running into issues with building. Now there are a couple of different approaches, and again, this is a skill issue problem. There are a couple of different approaches to building things, you know, kind of on this, you know, infrastructure as a service approach. You can have a build server that is specifically going to take your application, build it on that server, and then deploy it to another server. That's a very common approach because you can have a really beefy web server that has you know, a great CPU that uses just for building and maybe deploying a couple of applications and you deploy the built applications out to different infrastructure. That's fine. The problem that I was running into was I was installing Coolify on DigitalOcean and I was trying to use the smallest drop possible. And anytime I tried to build something, it would spike the CPU literally to 100% and then crash the VPS. So I was running into this problem constantly, especially with Rust. Rust specifically was problematic because the Rust compiler will take up every bit of CPU that it possibly can. Like it really, really is CPU intensive. So if you try to build stuff on Rust on these VPSs, it will take up every bit of that CPU and give you an OOM error. Like I had to straight up like hard reset droplets several times, even after upgrading them. So that was a problem. Now, another approach that you can have is using GitHub Actions to build your piece of software. So to build your Rust software, then deploy the artifact, so the actual built, you know, executable in Rust's case, and then you can deploy that artifact out to, you know, wherever you need it. I did that and it did work. The great thing about that is you are offloading the CPU intensive compilation process to GitHub, which uses, I believe, a serverless function. I'm not 100% sure. It's actually not 100% of the time serverless. I actually get into that in my blog, um, which I'll read through, you know, here in a second. Um, but, you know, it, it basically offloads a lot of that CPU intensive stuff on the GitHub, and then you get the compiled executable, which you can then deploy out using Coolify. Now, Coolify uses Docker images. And that is one of the biggest areas of skill issue that I have got. I don't understand anything having to do with Docker and that's for the DevOps folks. So what ended up happening? Well, I go more in depth into this entire kind of radicalization. I'm kind of calling it in the blog that I will link up here and also in the description and all of that. Um, it gives a couple of new resources. So Web Dev Cody has an incredibly deep knowledge on all things DevOps and CI CD. So I would definitely recommend the video that I linked there. Um, and, you know, I kind of talk a little bit about my journey as well, um, as well as, you know, kind of the issues that I had with Coolify. So where am I at now? At this point, I'm literally just SSHing into the VPS. That's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so I'm not doing any containerization. I will probably run into a, a, an area where I do want to do containerization. But at the moment, I am literally just creating batch scripts or bash scripts, not batch scripts, bash scripts that pull down the repo, build it, use PM2 to launch it. And then I use it in Nginx or NGINX. I call it Nginx, Nginx, I don't know. Um, and then I use that to actually route everything to um, the individual uh, JavaScripts like running, whatever you call that. So that's kind of how I'm doing everything now. It is like the simplest, most bare metal way that you could do things aside from, I mean, I don't even know, you know, but it's even, you know, I guess closer to metal than like the actual Dockerization stuff. Um, and it works. I've deployed like five production web applications to a VPS this way. It is literally just copying bash scripts and then changing a couple of things within them, doing SSH keygen, doing the actual certification creation with CertBot and copying Nginx like config files. Simplest thing ever, I've got it down to a science. And again, I'm deploying fast. Like I get it, I know that you're losing out on a lot of these different Lambda approaches and microservices and all of that fun stuff. I don't care because I'm deploying, I'm shipping, it's, it's working and people are mad about it, but I'm shipping and it works and I'm going to continue doing that. It's kind of like, you know, Peter Level's talking about how he still does things with PHP and jQuery. It works. He's shipping stuff and he's making millions of dollars doing it. I'm shipping stuff and not making any money doing it. You can do it. It's, it's perfectly feasible. So I guess if you're going to pull any lessons out of this, it is find the CI, CD, and DevOps approach 
that you can do reliably, quickly, and you understand. If you want to jump into Vercel and learn the entire Vercel stack, do it. They've got a great platform and tons of different large companies and enterprises rely on them without blowing up their bill unrealistically. If you want to do AWS, go do it. They're, they're, like most of the world uses AWS to include the Vercel folks. Vercel is just a wrapper on top of AWS. You have to remember that. If you want to use Coolify, highly, highly, highly recommend it. Great platform. It was a skill issue on my part that, you know, it didn't end up working out for me. If you want to do it the way that I do it, perfectly fine. The lesson to learn here is just do it however you want to do it. Figure out a way that works for you and go and do that. There's my rant. It's like midnight. I need to edit this, get it out, and let that be it for the night. Take it easy. Peace.